prospect is uh, 11 miles east of 543 South. It's near Bay Degree. Um, drilling started uh, that. This, this uh, campaign has drilling started in January 2013 and we completed 37 holes. I think, um, I think we had somewhat over 7,000 meters of drilling there. Um, there have been, in the past, th 33 historic holes and which discovered three holes, uh, three zones of mineralization. And at a 1% cutoff, there was about a million tons of 2.8% copper. There was some other um, known deposits at, in, the, uh, in the area along that zone. They uh, have low tonnage um, potential, uh, I shouldn't say potential, they have no, low known tonnage of copper and the grades, with the exception of a couple here, are, are lower. Uh, this is G2. Now we're looking at the drill hole map. Uh, again, the, the red holes are the collars of the holes that we drilled, and all the drilling came to the south. That's not showing. Uh, these little triangles are the historic holes. And uh, you can see that there's a concentration here because this is a subcrop of where the mineralization comes to the surface. Uh, we have a little uh, pod here, one here, one over here, one there, projected to the surface. And the reason they project like this is because in contrast to 543, this formation has got a steep dip. In fact, this is what the sections look like. Um, Here's the drill hole. This is a, again a, a, like a slice of the earth. Here's the drill hole. The collar of the drill hole is here. Termination is here. And you can see uh, this pink area is actually the, the mineralization that was intersected. Now, we've been challenged by um, the ability to to develop a, um, uh, a, a, a good uh, I say, a good tool to spot our drill holes. So if we don't, if, you, if we know where a deposit is, you can offset and, and undercut and continue to expand it. But if you don't know the deposit's there, how do you find it? The most valuable um, tool that we found so far is uh, soil geochemistry. Um, in other words, uh, sampling the soil and determining if there's copper in the soil. And that's hampered by, the, by two things. Number one, the calcite is very stable. And uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't leak a lot, of, uh, a lot of copper into the environment. So if you have a, a thick soil, say over 15 feet, you're not going to get any, any uh, um, expression of, of anomaly at the surface. <coughs> but we do know that this, uh, this zone is uh, about 20 miles long, at least. And less than 10 mi miles have been somewhat explored. A lot can be hiding there, and we believe that there's uh, great potential left. Just to show you what this looks like, this is the copper and soil that we determined back in the 70s. Each one of these spots is where we actually uh, determined that there is copper in the soil. And uh, uh, probably every one of these spots represents bedrock mineralization, mineralization that actually exists in the rock below. <coughs> but in areas that, uh, that you have deep overburden, here's 543, and not particularly deep. We don't have a, an anomaly. We have this anomaly here. But I'm not sure where that came from. We do have something down in this area here that we recently have uh, found that uh, is probably transported from 543. But uh, and G2, and the reason it's called G2 is right here. Um, the G2 is was found on the basis of, a, of, of copper and soil that we discovered but it took us five drill holes to find the deposit. So it's uh, very high risk, very high, um, very low uh, success ratio. 
And uh, just as a uh, apologize for not giving you some framework, but here's gradually 